If you're someone that has a debt tool, whether it be a personal line of credit, business line of credit, home equity line of credit, and you're in the double digit range, um, you're probably there because of your existing credit score. So it's just a matter of improving your credit to get the better rates. Even in this high interest rate environment, I'm still having clients come to me with HELOCs around 5%, 6%, 6.5% less than seven personal lines of credits that are under nine percent seven eight nine percent whereas there are other people that i see that have a home equity line of credit at like 12.75 percent or 11 percent or people with personal line of credits at 13.75 or 15.75 percent we don't want to stay there right for a really long period of time eventually want to graduate move change the banks improve the credit so that we can continue the velocity banking strategy or it's simply just not going to make sense right it's not going to be effective for you so as long as we run the numbers like we're going to do here so i'm going to take it to the board and i'm also going to be sharing my screen um, that is going to show you some additional information to be aware of as we're going through this particular case study so with that being said let's dive right into this we're going to spend a lot of time focusing on interest costs I think that is extremely important in today's environment because we're in a high interest rate environment, right? So here we go. Starting off with the four major numbers. Client on the board here is making $23,299.40 a month. Their total overestimated expenses are $19,301.04. Total debt is $1,265,375.72. Okay, a lot of debt. A lot of this debt is mortgage debt. He's got a lot of uh, uh, properties, real estate investments. So his concern is more of eliminating some of the consumer debt that he has rather than the property. So that's what we're going to be focusing on here. His net cash flow is $3,998.36. Could be a little bit more. Has a HELOC, uh, second lien home equity line of credit, 95 grand is a credit limit. The interest rate is 9%. Okay. And I'm going to show to you how we bring this 9% rate and cut that nearly in half to about a 5% cost, right? And then we're gonna compare it to the other debts that we're eliminating. And I'm gonna show you those interest rates. And then you get to determine, yes, it still makes sense, right? His goal, pay off debt, acquire more real estate. So first we're gonna pay off some debt, not all of his debt, not all of the 1.2 million. We're paying off some of the debt creating more cash flow, more liquidity, so that we can turn around and actually acquire more debt, more real estate debt that produces more cash flow. That is this person's strategy. That is what they desire to do. As long as we manage expectations, as long as we know what our leverage capacity is, that's going to help us not be in a situation where we become over leveraged. Okay. Velocity banking really helps you with not over leveraging yourself. And when you do over leverage, you're immediately going to feel it when doing velocity banking, you're going to see it, right? And it's up to you to make that decision, whether you want to take on more risk by going into more debt or paying down debt before accumulating more, right? And staying in a healthy range that you feel comfortable with according to your abilities, right? Your capabilities, your expectations, right? So on this particular home equity line of credit, when the client approached me, they already had a bunch of debt on the HELOC. So whenever you're in a situation where you're trying to implement velocity banking and maybe you already have a debt tool and then you learned about the benefits of velocity banking, then you realize, holy crap, I could be using this way differently. That's what this person realized. They owe 85,000. So we're going to be doing velocity banking on the tool itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to compare it to debt snowball. What debt snowball says to do in regards to paying off debt and we're going to compare because debt snowball is our measuring stick to determine if velocity banking will be going faster than debt snowball which debt snowball just simply means making extra payments on your debt one by one creating a snowball effect lowest balance to highest balance if that goes faster than velocity banking then we have an argument to say hey we probably shouldn't do this we should stick to the uh, a traditional method maybe try to find another debt tool at a lower rate right that would be like the guidance that i would give my clients All right so at eighty-five thousand owed 85,336.06 owed on the line times that by 9%. Here is your number 7,680.24. Write that down in your notes. You can also plug in your own numbers with your own debt tool with however much you owe, right? On your tool times it by whatever the rate is. 
that's your number. This is the most amount of interest you could possibly pay in a 12 month period. So the goal is to reduce that number as much as humanly possible. Now, here's what you have to understand. When you're running this math, this is this number is assuming that all you did was make interest only payments to the HELOC, right? That's that is not the case in in many of the HELOCs that we're using. Usually a HELOC is um, principal and interest payments or gives you the option to do interest only payments and then you can add principal, right? But when we're doing velocity banking, no matter what type of HELOC we have, we're always paying towards principal. We're dumping all of our income into the HELOC. So we're not just paying interest. So by knowing this, if you were to make just the monthly payment that is interest and principal, this number will naturally be lower, right? So that's the max that we can go. Just want to be very, very clear on that. Another element here, uh, by the way, that's the monthly payment. I know I crossed it out because I'm going to be mentioning something soon, but this is the monthly payment if it was interest only. 60, 640 bucks, right? You divide that by 12, you should get this number, interest only payments. Someone does principal, it's going to be a little bit more. Another component of velocity banking here is we're using a credit card to run bills and earn about 2% cash back rewards. We've identified what those bills are within this number of the 19 grand. We have $4,000. $46.86 per month that we can run through a credit card, pay it off each and every month and get $80 back, $80.93 at 2%, right? Here's our rule of leverage. You take the credit limit times it by 66%. You should get this number 62,700 is cash flow times 12 where it currently is 3998.36 you should get this number 47980.32 average yearly cost when doing velocity banking should be around this number 4280.58 which is actually a 5% cost of borrowing the bank said 9 we paid 5 okay that is the the beauty of velocity banking here where we can manipulate that rate right so this rate is not nearly as important as what we actually pay so if we when we're looking at tools when you're applying for a HELOC that's what you want to be running the numbers on okay this bank is doing nine percent this bank is at seven you know typically you're going to want to go with the the lower rate amongst all the different tools but there may be some factors as to why you would go with a higher rate for example maybe you're looking at two different HELOCs this one's at nine percent and this one's at seven percent so you're like let me go with the seven percent but with the 7% HELOC at this particular bank, they uh, force you to do an initial withdrawal of 25 grand and you can't pay off that 25 grand in full within the first year versus this HELOC's at 9% and there's no limitation as to how much you can borrow or if you're forced to borrow a certain amount. So that might be a deciding factor right there. So it's important to read between the lines look at everything that's being on, laid out on the table so you know how to move forward and if you need additional help obviously you can reach out to me book a consultation and we can work through that together right so coming back we went over the the layout here this is going to be the velocity banking scenario right of money going in money coming out and i'm going to be highlighting what that net interest cost is per month and i'm overestimating it on purpose right when this person's actually doing it his number should actually be better than what i provide in reality the cost will probably be around four percent maybe even lower right when he's fully doing velocity banking at its full potential so at eighty five thousand three thirty six oh six times by nine percent divide by 365 average daily borrowing costs is going to be twenty one dollars and four cents okay twenty one dollars and four cents is what i pay for however long i owe eighty five thousand three thirty six oh six understand the very first month of doing velocity banking i'm never going to owe this amount why because the first move i do is i dump income into the line so i'm never actually going to pay this 2104 it's going to be a little bit less nonetheless still put it there so here's what you do take the 85 minus income you should get this number 62,036 66 times that by nine percent divide by 365 now you're at 29 cents. so here's what i'm doing i'm getting an average i'm saying for roughly 10 days we owe this number for roughly 10 days we owe this number all right and then expenses are coming out little by little notice how there's a difference okay we went from 19,301.04 
expenses to now 18661 because of the payment. We no longer have a payment because our income is the payment. We're dumping our income into the HELOC before the payment is even due, which manipulates what you actually owe on the due date itself, which is going to be the interest on the due date itself. That's how this particular HELOC, I believe, works. So the payment's going to get pushed out where he's not even going to owe a payment because when we dump our paycheck in, that registers as a payment, right? So you're immediately canceling interest from accruing. Nonetheless, still going to show overestimation, creating that, that buffer space, right? And even with all this buffering that I'm doing, I'm going to compare it to that snowball and show you the, the difference. You're going to be like, oh, wow, there's, there's quite a bit of an advantage here, right? So this is what's actually coming out of the HELOC the interest cost stays in there, which I'll show you what that net interest cost will be. And that's what's going to add to the ending balance of whatever's owed. So when we take money out little by little, not all at once, no, we're not taking out 18 grand all at once and then pay bills, taking it out little by little as bills are due, that's when we will pay them, right? And we're going to transfer it out of the HELOC back into the checking account to pay that bill. Whatever can be paid with a credit card, right? that money actually stays in the HELOC for a longer period of time. We're swiping credit over here. And then on the due date of that car, 25 days later, we're paying the statement balance in full, moving that money out of the HELOC into the checking, checking auto pays, the credit card avoids interest. We actually apply the, the cashback rewards to the balance of the credit card, which means 80 less dollars coming out of the line of credit, which means more money you recover in interest. All of that, trust me, adds up month over month. It's quite amazing. So here we go. Income went in, expenses came out at the end of the month. Here's where my balance should be. 80,697.68 times that by 9%, divide by 365, you should get $19.89, okay? So what you do is you're going to add the three numbers, 2104, 15.29, and 1989. Add the three, you're going to get this number, $56.22. Divide by three, you should get this number. This is assuming, again, that he owed 85 grand for 10 days, 62 grand for 10 days, and then 80 grand for 10 days. That's not the case. It's more like in the middle of all those numbers is, is what's happening, right? As money goes in, it gets, it sits, it parks, money's slowly coming out. So on average, we're paying about $18.74 a day. Times that by 30 days, here is your overestimated borrowing costs in the first month of doing velocity banking. $562.28. So on the due date, that's how much he should uh, pay. It'll, it'll either, depending on the bank, it'll either automatically take it from what's owed in the HELOC, right? That's one way. Another way is it'll come from a checking account or they'll require a, a payment to be made. But understand that that five sixty two twenty eight dollars that's money we were already paying. So we're not paying any new interest, right? We were already paying it over here before, which was 640. So we brought 640 and we reduced it down to 562.28. And then when you minus cashback rewards, we're really paying about $481.35. You're gonna get a bill for 562.28 this particular client. And then those of you who are running your numbers along this case study here, you'll get you'll get charged from the bank. That's what it'll say you'll owe. You say, hey, this is what you owe on the due date. You have two options. Either the bank will take it from the available credit in the HELOC itself automatically on the due date, or we have to pay it. So because you already dumped all your income into the HELOC in advance, what would happen is either there is no payment to begin with. That's one thing that will happen. Okay, so uh, like I said, not all HELOCs are the same here. So I want you to comprehend this. When you dump money into the home equity line of credit that you have, first lien or second lien, what is, here are the different things that will likely happen. Either that will register as your month's payment, especially if, it, especially if you dump more 
than what the payment is, right? So in this case, if it's 640 or whatever, and this person gets a paycheck, five grand, he dumps five grand into his HELOC, that just registered as a payment for that month. So that means he won't have a payment. So that means moving forward, all he's paying is whatever interest accrues within that statement cycle of the HELOC itself. So that's probably going to happen for most of you. Another version is when you pay into the HELOC, you may be given an option. Every time you make a payment, it'll say additional payment principal. It might, you, you can circle the box or you check it. You say additional principal payment. That means whatever you pay in, none of it is applying towards interest. Ideally, that's the position you always want to be in when you're doing velocity banking. So you always want your initial paycheck, the money goes, the money that goes in, always want that to be principal, ideally. You may not have an option. You may not have a choice, depending on what HELOC you get. If you do have the choice, always select principal only payments. So what will happen is on the due date, you would have accrued interest owed over the last 25 day, 30 day cycle, right? You will have the option to either pay that from your checking account, whatever that interest is, from your next paycheck that comes in, whatever it is, with what? Your entire income and it'll wipe it out, right? Or they'll take it from the balance owed, uh, from the available credit, I'm sorry, from the available credit in the HELOC. We'll just take it right out of there. So that means you wouldn't have had to like pull money out and throw money back in. You wouldn't have had to do that. I like those kinds of HELOCs because this allows me to keep like every single time, 100% of my money, every single time it's going to principal, going to principal. And then on the due date, they're just extracting their cost, right? Out of the available credit. We're paying interest no matter what, right? Our goal is simply to reduce that cost as much as humanly possible and then compare what is the what is the net cash flow gain for doing that. So when we're looking at this right here, 56228 is what we're overestimating our cost to be. Balance at the end of the first month of doing velocity banking here in April 2023, 80,697.68. So then you add the interest. Here's your ending balance. 81,259.96. Here's the cash flow gain. $158.67, right? And let me uh let me check my math here just to make sure. So we got 640 originally. That's where we were at in 2 cents minus let me do 562. I want to see if I okay, it's 77 and then add the 80, right? See that? So month 1, even though I didn't I didn't pay off a debt yet, right? We're not we didn't even pay anything off yet. We're paying down the debt tool by doing velocity banking on the debt tool and we get $158.67 more dollars going to the principal of that debt. So that is cash flow recovery, $158.67. That's cash flow. 